Did you get everything for the party? Oh yeah, it's all there. Oh, I'm getting kind of hungry. Could you pass me the chips? Oh, shoot. I think I forgot them. What? I, I thought you said you got everything. Oh, well, we'll just have to go to the store again. <sighs> okay. We forget things all the time. After all, to err is human, and that's okay. But in a health setting, forgetting things can have dangerous consequences. Every year, 94,000 people die from practitioner-caused errors in U.S. hospitals. Great job, everyone! The operation was a success! Wait, hold on. We're missing a sponge. What? Missing a sponge? I wonder where... Oh, no! What you just saw was an example of how a lack of preparation and communication resulted in a direct risk to a patient's health. A sponge left inside of a patient was only discovered post-surgery. This accident could be prevented in so many ways using modern applications of health technology to keep track of supplies and better monitor patient vitals. Join us as we journey through time and space to discover the importance of interdisciplinary collaboration and the role of the health informaticist. Health informaticists analyze and synthesize information to develop meaningful knowledge applicable to a healthcare setting. They are the creators of software and systems designed to integrate large volumes of healthcare data to detect meaningful trends and inform future decisions in policy and cost management. Health informatics is an emerging field that demands a new generation of highly skilled workers. Boy, this run is exhausting. It yeah. feels like we're running in place. Yeah, it really does. Just keep going. Hey, Sarah, so the other day I was thinking about what we could do to promote patient safety in the workplace. Oh, cool. What could we do? Well, I had a lot of ideas. <laughs> and? Well, they all add up to one good concept. Well, what is it? You've got to track the data. <laughs> <laughs> In order to track patient health data, we first have to gather the data. While this has always been done by a hospital monitoring equipment and data telemetry, the health field is quickly moving towards patient mobility and the compactness of monitoring applications. Hence, wearable technology, with its greater viability, is beginning to have a large effect on the way care providers collect patient health information. Now, a few examples of wearable technology include heart monitors, wrist oximeters, and oxygen saturation meters. And eMed Online is a great new way to learn and track treatment adherence by monitoring how often patients access their medication. The program collects compliance data by utilizing voice commands and user input monitors to show how and when often patients access their information on medication. The data is then sent to a server for review, after which clinicians can provide relevant feedback and specific further education to optimize compliance. Now, take a look at this quick video to see one patient using eMed Online at home. This is a call from Grace at eMed Online for Barbara iPhone 5. Is this Barbara? Hi, Barbara. It's time for your medicine. You are taking Rinvella 800 milligrams. Are you ready? Has your doctor changed your dose? Tap the medicine you are ready to take. Do you have enough medicine? This is the medicine you are taking now. Tap the medicine for instruction. Take one tablet now. You are taking this drug to treat kidney disease due to severe high blood pressure. Swallow tablet whole. Do not chew, break, or crush. If you have trouble swallowing, talk with your doctor. Have your blood work checked often. Tap done when you are finished. Goodbye, Barbara. Be kind to yourself today. Let's talk about RFIDs. RFIDs, or radio frequency identification, are small electromagnetic devices used to track objects by location. They consist of a coiled antenna and a CPU of a couple kilobytes, just enough to store labeling information. You may have seen RFIDs in stores as stickers on the inside covers of books, or as plastic tags pinned to clothing to prevent shoplifting. RFIDs function similar to barcodes, but have a few key differences. Barcodes are category specific, whereas RFIDs are specific to each individual item. Other differences include ease of use. 
barcodes must be scanned directly with a laser, one at a time. RFIDs use radio wave detection, accurate to a distance of up to 20 feet, allowing hundreds of tags to be scanned per second. It's worth mentioning that while individual RFID chips are more expensive than traditional barcodes, their reprogrammability makes them more favorable and reliable than traditional methods. The cheapest RFIDs on the market today can cost as little as seven cents each. In recent years, RFIDs have grown popular in healthcare thanks to their versatility and availability. The small size of current RFID chips allows them to be inserted in or attached to almost anything. RFID tagging is popular in hospitals to keep track of drugs and equipment. One blossoming use of RFID chips is to actually track patient movements. Patients are free to move throughout a hospital while care providers monitor their location via RFID scanners placed in the building. Perhaps most importantly, RFIDs could be used in surgeries to track each sponge used and ensure none were lost or accidentally left in the patient. As the cost of RFID technology begins to shrink along with chip size, traditional tracking methods may be abandoned altogether. With RFIDs, healthcare providers can more quickly and efficiently establish what's available and where it's located. Here's another common scene, the formal dinner setting. Imagine sitting down at this table with the first course, a salad. You might think, which fork do I pick up? Wrong fork, Sarah. Now, most of us have no idea which utensils are which, and too many factors in a certain situation can end up confounding progress or leading to a negative health outcome. To be simple, complexity breeds confusion. A clear example of where complexity can lead to confusion is with the smart pump. Smart pumps are automated delivery systems designed to handle high hazard drugs. They are effective at reducing adverse events during intravenous drug delivery. If anything unusual is detected, an alarm activates. Smart pumps can provide warnings for high dosages, potential drug interactions, and even patient allergies. There are two categories of alarms, soft and hard. Soft alarms can be overridden by the user. Hard alarms are potentially lethal and cannot be overridden. Smart pumps allow clinicians to establish hospital-wide standards for concentration, units, and nomenclature. This standardization reduces complexity and prevents careless mistakes during patient transfer from one part of the hospital to another. Here is a short excerpt from an excellent TED Talk by accomplished surgeon, writer, and public health researcher, Dr. Atul Gawande. I'd like to share it with you. We have now found treatments for nearly all of the tens of thousands of conditions that a human being can have. We can't cure it all. We can't guarantee that everybody will live a long and healthy life. But we can make it possible for most. But what does it take? Well, we've now discovered 4,000 medical and surgical procedures. We've discovered 6,000 drugs that I'm now licensed to prescribe. And we're trying to deploy this capability town by town to every person alive in our own country, let alone around the world. And we've reached the point where we've realized, as doctors, we can't know it all. We can't do it all by ourselves. As Atul stated, one person can't do it all. That's why it's vital we create a culture of collaboration. One way to do this is to emphasize a blameless culture over a culture of accountability. This encourages caregivers to speak up when something goes wrong, so actions can be taken immediately to mitigate damages. With so many people coordinating to serve patients, it's easy to get lost. It's important to always remember that we as healthcare providers are part of a team. To get the best patient outcomes, we have to combine our ideas, talents, and creativity. After all, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. And of course, you all saw this coming. These things knock at the big picture that is interdisciplinary collaboration, which focuses on how to create the conditions for health professionals to work together in the most effective and efficient way possible. Healthcare professionals have to share information regarding a patient's situation for effective dissemination of knowledge. 
They also have to communicate in order to act as a synergistic unit more valuable than the sum of parts. And you all remember Dr. Cates' informatics term, synergy. Finally, this unit of healthcare professionals has to deliberate as to what the best course of action is for a positive health outcome. Technologies such as RFID and smart pumps make the process of delivering a positive health outcome easier by removing factors that could complicate a diagnosis. Well, that's all we've got for you. Man, I still feel like we're not going anywhere. Well, at least we know all these great things about interdisciplinary collaboration and health informatics technologies. True. That's why we need all these business majors and biomedical students to come help us out, because that collaboration is so critical. Mm. We need to hand this off. Yeah. Good job. Come on, Dr. Good Kate. job. <laughs> Woo! Look at that man run. <laughs>